uh, comfortable to pray from where you are you could please uh, lead in prayer this morning uh, elisha are you okay to pray Yes, yes, Pastor. Okay, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, once again, we are most grateful. We thank you for the gift of life this morning. And we bless you for the opportunity to be gathered here under your feet, O oh God. Father, we pray, commit our discussions and our studies into your hands. Lord, come and take absolute control in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, commit every mind and every thoughts. We pray, commit personality into your hands, O God. We pray that you take absolute control of her, Father, and grant her utterances, the ability to explain things for us to be able to understand in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, commit our brothers who are yet to join also to you, into your hands. Father, grant them the grace and the, and the and the and the mercies for to enable them to join us to continue in this our journey. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elisha. So, as I told us, uh, what we'll do is we will quickly go over uh, the content that is remaining in our notes, and then you know we will have. Uh, an extended period of uh, practice session today. So um, here, chapter 15, if you are, are following me from the PDF version or even your, uh, you know, uh, printed copy, just uh, come to chapter 15. Basically, it has um, uh, examples there of women who ministered with the prophetic anointing. So we understand from scripture that God did bless uh, women with this gift uh, we see miriam was a prophetess deborah was a prophetess uh, halda is uh, spoken of as a prophet uh, isaiah's wife as well is referred to as a prophet in scripture so there were you know many prophetesses anna in the new testament philip's daughters prophesied we are told so the anointing was for women as well uh, as we see uh, some women are called as prophetesses, uh, which means that they were in the office of the uh, uh, office of the prophet. So, uh, going back to what we learned when we studied about um, uh, kingdom of God or house of God, we said that even women are called to serve as uh, leaders, and also in the fivefold ministry offices, we explained how when we look at Ephesians chapter 4, and we see that, that God gave gifts to men, the word men there uh, is anthropos, which is actually a gender neutral word, and therefore, uh, both men as well as women can be anointed and positioned in the fivefold ministry offices. So, um, you know, we can accept if women are prophesying in the church. You know, it's not something that uh, the Bible is silent about women do many women have prophesied and women do prophesy now coming to the next chapter here about uh, uh, practical issues concerning prophetic ministry uh, basically we just have to be careful about uh, following or moving in the prophetic anointing in a scriptural way unfortunately we see uh, many things around us which don't fit what the word of God says. Uh, and, and so we must know the difference and be careful to set a good example when it comes to the prophetic. Now, prophecies have been used to, um, you could say, you know, even manipulate people, control people, influence them in the wrong way. Uh, so, you know, when we see things like that, it really... Uh, uh, it really breaks our heart to know that the gift that God has given, which is so pure, uh, it's being used in uh, the wrong ways. And uh, sometimes there's a lot of hype associated with the prophetic anointing. There is uh, 
you know sensationalism created so that people uh, will be attracted to a ministry or a church or a certain individual so uh, when we flow in the gifts of the spirit we must avoid these things so what are some pitfalls that we must uh, avoid one is prophesying for money we see Balaam is a uh, Balaam. We saw his prophetic experience and we learned from that. But the attitude which Balaam had, where he was ready to prophesy anything to have a gain. Now, that kind of an attitude is a wrong attitude, and we should never do that. Even Gehazi, he um, was uh, Elisha's assist assistant and uh, he tried to you know make a quick buck he went behind Naman and he uh, told him that hey you know my master has sent me to to get something from you some reward some benefits for the service rendered to you so uh, anyway Elisha through that prophetic anointing was able to discern that Gehazi has not done the right thing but again you know Gehazi is a bad example who went after profit and had a money-making attitude from the gift so that is not good and uh, expectations of people you know, playing to people's expectations now that is also a pitfall um, uh, we see in isaiah isaiah 30 verse 10 it says uh, who say to the seers do not see and to the prophets do not prophesy to us right things speak to us smooth things prophesy deceits so when there's a lot of pressure, sometimes what happens is, you know, other um, prophesying believer or the prophets, uh, they want to keep things um, smooth. And so they can just come up with a nice prophecy uh, and not rock people's boats. But that's not what God has called us to. And so we have to be careful and don't let people's expectations pressure us. Whatever God is saying in a wise way, we must be revealing that. And then the next thing here is abuse of a prophet's reward. Now, the Bible does say, Matthew 10, 41, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. So with this one verse, there are many prophetic ministries, prophets who um, uh, preach that you have to give them uh you know, some offering or you know, something. So uh, unfortunately, uh, even numbers are added to it. Like, okay, if you if you give, uh, if 10 people give 10,000 rupees each, then God will bless you with uh, whatever, 10,000 blessings, things like that. So, uh, you know, the scripture, yeah, it's true. We are called to honor the prophet. And there is a reward associated with honoring a prophet, but it doesn't mean that people... Uh, use it, you know, take it to this extent where, unfortunately, in many cases, it's nothing but a fundraising, uh, uh, you know, a, a fundraising promotion. So uh, we have to be very careful. You know, what is our motive? Is God really saying that there have to be, you know, 10 donors and they have to give this kind of money? Uh, so the prophet is the right person to, you know, judge his or her own motive. So, yeah, to be careful about that. And using thus says the Lord, we've already talked about it. And we said, you know, the when we, when we use thus says the Lord, it's like saying, I'm very sure, very, very sure. Don't even question what I'm saying. So use it sparingly. Sometimes the term thus says the Lord or the phrase is used to control people. Because then once the pastor has said, or the prophet has said, thus says the Lord, you know, how can anybody go, uh, a, a, how can anyone make uh, other, other decisions? So do not use it in a manipulative way. Then, of course, death and doom prophecies. So we've talked about this and said that, uh, you know, sometimes because people carry a critical spirit, uh, prophecies talking about, you know, people being judged, people going to die, uh, all of those things are pronounced over, uh, uh, you know, well-meaning, uh, God-loving believers. Uh, and even you know, when things happen like this, I think I told us earlier that it just creates a lot of fear and more than faith in God, uh, it paralyzes people. So uh, we should never be making such prophecies. And if uh, we come across things like this, then we must 
uh, if we are in that position of authority to to instruct and correct the minister, then yes. Uh, or uh, if we are in touch with the people who have heard such prophecies, we can encourage them and say, this is not how God speaks. So uh, we could be careful about that. And then, of course, weird and pathetic prophecies. There's a section here where, uh, again, to please people, to gain benefits, there are um, uh, incidents where people go to you know uh, homes uh, and uh, just uh, as a revelation say so many things i see that satan is trying to do this to you or i see that in your home in this corner there is a there is a, you know some power of darkness which is sucking out your um, your financial blessings so uh, then okay allow me to pray over that that wall in your house so i mean things like that where there is no proper outcome to what is being spoken now if at all you know something good is coming out of this prophecy uh, you know maybe maybe a more appropriate way if people are suffering financially because of a demonic uh, struggle the best thing is to go take authority pray over that household break that uh, then uh, maybe flow in the gifts of the spirit through the uh, yes discernment has shown us that there is there is a demonic influence, but also a word of wisdom where we can guide people and tell them what they should actually do, because that will be more useful than just saying, oh, OK, it's this corner or it's that cupboard. And, you know, uh, there are things like this that happen. So uh, we we've got to be careful and never, never do things like that. And uh, we've been saying that ultimately the word of God is what is our um, plumb line, our standard. So we go by that. And if required, you know, we seek a confirmatory word through the word of a prophet and it shouldn't be the other way around. So let's continue to trust in the spirit of prophecy. Uh, Revelation 19, 10, the second part there says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So every true prophecy reveals Christ to us, reveals Jesus even more to us. That is the spirit of prophecy. And uh, we will see more of it displayed played in our midst uh, and we must expect we must expect the supernatural even signs and wonders the way um, uh, prophets like Elijah and others experienced during their time so the last section here chapter 17 is about the making of a prophet and uh, here we see that God has called different prophets uh, I'm specifically talking about somebody who's in the office of a prophet uh, they're called in different ways. So Samuel was dedicated by his mother. Uh, Moses grew up in Pharaoh's court and uh, you know, he was called at a certain age in his life. And then he, he tried to pursue the call of God on his life. Now, Elijah, Elisha, likely to be students from Samuel's prophetic school. Um, and then you have, you know, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Amos, everyone was called in a different way. Uh, and uh, they recognized what God was doing through their lives. And we also noticed that many of them you know, went through a time of isolation. Uh, a good example would be John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and nobody really knew what he was all about till a certain time. And then, you know, he emerges, he uh, preaches about, uh, he prepares the way for the revelation of Jesus. So generally, we notice that prophets go through a time of isolation. Now, in our setting, it may not be somebody going off into a wilderness, but it can be more of obscurity where people don't know us. We are just serving in small ways, but the gift of uh, prophecy is flowing through us. Um, but, you know, we just have to be open to it because what God is really interested in is our character. And so God uses every opportunity to, to build the character of his people, especially those who are uh, called to, uh, you know, these offices, prophetic office, because when God pours out the anointing, which is the wine, we need the right wine skin. Otherwise, if the wine skin breaks or the character breaks, all the wine will, you know, like uh, be wasted. So God wants the person to have good godly character. And so one must yield uh, themselves to what God is doing. Second Timothy 2, verse 20, 21, very encouraging. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor 
sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work and that's what god wants from every child of his so we are constantly yielding ourselves to cleanse you know our, our character our motives uh, our inner man so when we are doing that we are offering ourselves uh, in a dedicated way to be that vessel of honor and say okay god you know pour out your anointing in me here i am to do your bidding here i am to do your will so uh, and you know god continues to work on his people uh, those in the prophetic office he calls he stretches them sometimes um, and uh, you know god is a great god and a big god so uh, we might have plans for ourselves and think that at some point in time this is what i should be doing but god may take us through a completely different route because what he is doing is he's stretching us inside uh, and you know preparing us for a time when he will bring us from obscurity to a place where we can minister uh, you know in um, the capacity that he intends for us so we have to be trusting of god yielding to him and um, uh, keep at this process of cleansing ourselves then god can use us as a vessel of honor and uh, yes there will definitely be a time when god will position us uh, at at the right place and then we can flow out of the anointing that god has given us so uh, while all this is happening it's important for us to have good support encouragement guidance correction so uh, we can pray that god will connect us with such people who will really build us up uh, in our journey you know of of living our calling out uh, for god so uh, and i mean even if there are no mentors unfortunately in some cases there are no mentors but let, that should not uh, make us question our calling you see samuel during his times the word of the lord was rare so he was like a lone ranger but god brought out such amazing prophetic ministry through his life so what we're saying is even in the absence of a mentor the anointing can thrive so we shouldn't say that oh somebody doesn't have a mentor so how can you be a prophet no we can't do that god can work in any way if there are no mentors one can still shine for god's glory Okay. and uh, a prophet is also groomed to confront uh, challenges in the ministry we've already seen that there, there are uh, demonic uh, opposition demonic influences that can rise up against the prophetic anointing but also a prophet when you especially see ministries of people like jeremiah uh, a lot of rejection okay because here you are saying the word of the lord and people are not ready to listen to it or like jonah you go say something and then the people repent something else happens and here people are saying oh false prophet so there's all of that that a prophet could go through but for the sake of the call you know we must be in a place where we keep ourselves strong and trust that you know god will continue to release his anointing and bless the uh, body of christ through that so with that we have completed uh, all the key points um, that we need to look at so if there are any questions we will take that up um, and uh, after that you know we'll just go into a time of praying for one another so yeah i'll just leave this time open few minutes uh, in case you have questions Okay, so if there are no questions, then what we will do is, um, I'll, uh, I'll will assign breakout rooms to everyone because I know yesterday uh, we couldn't have sufficient time. Uh, so, just a moment. So there are 23 people 
on the call right now or oh, 24 okay 24. so we can just do uh yes is there a hand raised or a comment okay actually yeah there are some noises going on i think there's no distraction i can't speak but okay yeah that's okay abhinash you can just join and be part of the group so what we will do is we will we will have eight groups here eight breakout rooms and uh, i am again just gonna do a random shuffle uh, in a bit you will all be going off into those rooms okay so yeah if if there are only two people in a room don't worry about it just pray for one another so i'm opening up the rooms uh please stay 10 minutes so three people in a room i think 10 minutes is good okay christopher to be able to move from room to room who me uh, could you could you please uh, only me okay yeah okay let me see i'll 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 work on it so let's start now so i will give everyone 10 minutes and you will have sufficient time to share we'll come back we'll discuss the process and everything uh, it should be uh, sufficient the time so okay we are going into the rooms and uh, yeah please pray and see how you can um, hear from god and share that 10 minutes okay everybody yes yes master yes, ten. okay okay great okay let's do it Sure. So it's 9.22. Please come back at 9.32. Yes. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, uh, Nisha, Salomi, Kennedy, Louis, can you hear me? Please let me know if you can hear me because we can pray for one another here while we wait for the others to finish.
Sorry, Beth. You've all been transported back to the main room. Uh, I know some of you are still praying, but I hope that you got a sufficient time compared to the earlier session. Uh, so yeah, sorry if if anybody's prayer got uh, interrupted. Uh, but uh, was it okay? Was it okay this time? Yes, Pastor. Yes, this time was clear uh, enough time. Better. 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 Okay, Definitely. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in case you haven't shared a prophetic word or want to pray for someone, the stream page is always there. Please uh, follow up on that. Uh, we'll take a few minutes to uh, see how different ones of you heard from God. So uh, I'll just you know, go ahead and ask. Um, so Tarun, uh, I... I came to your room and then, you know, you were sharing some words for your teammate. Uh, would you be able to tell us how exactly you, you said what you said? Uh, so I, I saw an image um, uh, of uh, a beam of light, but uh, uh, it, it was going in kind of a closed uh, room, um, uh, like a, like you know you, you it, it's like you put a torch inside the box and the the light of the torch is not coming out of the box because the box is closed so i i felt that you know there is a deposit of uh, light that is happening but there's a door needs to be open for it to flow out uh, so and that that door i felt could be uh, anything like uh, I, I, for example, uh, oh, you start a life group and you start sharing things. God works through that. His light will flow through that uh, door. A life group could be a door through which God could speak to others uh, with you as a channel. Uh, so there, there's a door that needs to be open for the light to flow out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. Thank you for sharing. So basically, it was uh, more like uh, a visual, but maybe not stationary, a little more than that. And so that is what Tarun saw. And he interpreted the light and the limitation and all that. And he shared. So that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay. So uh, Mangi, there's a message for you on the chat here from Beth. Thank you, Beth, for sharing that. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Sister Rupa, I heard you also praying and saying some things. So can you share how exactly you you mentioned what you did? Ma'am, yes. thank you. Uh, it's rarely I see a vision. But when somebody is talking, I sometimes the spirit of the God puts a strong uh, knowing and a verse for them. That's how I usually minister. Only rarely God puts uh, prophetic words. But for this time, I have received verses for brothers and just shared it there with them. That's all. Thank you, okay. Ma okay, thank you. Thank you, sister. So uh, for her, it was a verse that came. And based on that, she was ministering. Uh, okay, so uh, Beth, if at all you can, you know, you can share and speak. Uh, would you be open to telling us how you received this word? Um, yeah, so uh, Brother Louis was in our group with Mangi, Mangi, me, and um, he shared something to Mangi, and Mangi uh, shared that he, what God was putting on his heart, and it it um, flowed with what I was feeling to share with Mangi, um, and we didn't. I didn't have time because we came back into the group. <laughs> So I, I shared part of it with him um, and then I just typed out the rest of it um, here in the chat. 
Wow, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing Beth. So for Beth, then, it was a so sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, one second, Kennedy. So um, for Beth, it was a sense or a feeling she described it as. And in this case, because it's a group, as we were discussing, you have a confirmation. Someone saying something and the Spirit of God is ministering in the same way or a similar way. Uh, and so she felt that it's flowing, that feeling is flowing with what was being mentioned. So, yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Yes, Kennedy, please go ahead. I think what my dear sister, Rupa, she told me something that I've been praying for, something that is in my heart. So it was timely. Oh, timely. okay. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. So that's a yeah. that's an affirmation. Whatever she said, that is how things are. So, Sister Rupa, it's an encouragement that you know you are hearing from God uh, in what you said. Praise God, praise God. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. So, anyone else here felt that, oh, it's bang, you know, bang on. Whatever this person said, it's actually happening. Anyone like that? Okay, say. Please go ahead, say. So I, I was in the room with um, Maxine and um, Salome. Uh -huh. um, so I, I shared what I was seeing when I was praying. And two images came. Was One was like a stream with um, plants, leaves, right, basically. And then I also saw an image of honey pouring, right? And so when Maxine also mentioned what he heard, the Lord reminding him while praying, he was reminding him of Eden, the place of Eden. And he also, he mentioned that um, God was talking about fellowship, the first fellowship he had with man, and that the reason why he drove them out was due to the sin. So when I look at the stream and the leaves, it looks like a place of peace and um, God keeping us fresh in all seasons. But I see the connection again going further with the reminder God giving Maxine about the place of Eden for closer fellowship and uh, for us to go deeper with God. So I just saw the connection basically with what I saw and what he heard from God from that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sai, for sharing. Uh, so what we'll do is we will continue to use the stream page and also the chat section here throughout our course. We still have to complete uh, the teaching on the apostolic. But in any session, if you send something, you know, general, it can be shared openly. Then use the chat section, You use the stream section and you can post okay, a word for someone. So let's keep it going. Let's keep the, the anointing flowing and you know, keep blessing one another. That's what we'll do. We'll also cover uh, apostolic ministry starting next week. Um, but if we are able to wrap it up quickly, maybe towards the end, we can have another session, have more time to really pray over one another in this way. Okay, so that is the plan. And thank you once again, everyone, for joining in. And Christopher, brilliant idea. I didn't know about the features of uh, you know breakout rooms here, but uh, very helpful. So let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this, uh, uh, Lord, uh, this course on understanding the prophetic. Father, we thank you for ministering to us by your spirit. Lord, we pray that, Lord, what has been activated in each one of us, Lord, that you will help us. Lord, flow in a greater measure, uh, Lord, with this anointing. I pray a blessing upon everyone. And God, the way Elisha prayed and said, let their eyes be opened. Father, I, I speak that over every person. Let their eyes be opened, ears be opened, hearts be opened to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying now. And Father, we pray that, Lord, as your body, we will rise up, O God, and God, that each one will overflow with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we submit ourselves and we believe that, Lord, you will keep taking us higher, O God, even in the prophetic anointing. Thank you. 
for the words that have been revealed to us. And Father, we pray for the wisdom to apply those words in our lives, Father, so that, Lord, we can see your kingdom built. Lord, we, we thank you once again. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, Amen. Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Have a Thank beautiful you, day. Yeah. God bless. God bless. Bye. You can carry on to your next course. So take care. Have a wonderful weekend as well. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you.